Hello everyone. Okay, welcome back to Shenzhen. I O. So uh, I'm back here at the puzzle which I first solved in the previous video uh, because there are some. Uh, I, I did quite badly, or I feel like I did quite badly last time, and I want to uh, redeem myself a little bit by by talking about some things. First of all, um, I had the weird question, or, or maybe it's not a weird question, but I had the weird situation of not being able to check what my output was. So the question that I had was how do you read or how can you read from an output in this game well it seems that you can't um and in fact there is a reddit thread uh, if you search for this on google you'll probably find a reddit thread on the subreddit for this game this game has its own subreddit uh, where people post about exactly that they basically say yeah you, you can't do it if you read an output that always shows the output as being zero even when it's not so basically reading from an output turns it into an input. Uh, if you want to be able to read from a pin, the pin needs to actually be getting something in from somewhere. And in this case, uh, this is an output. So I was trying to read from, you know, from this pin, but there needs to be something actually going into this pin for you to be able to read from it. You can't output to a pin and then check what did you output on it. That does not work. So um, it's, kind of a bug but not really i guess it's kind of just how the game behaves again one of the one of the annoying things about playing games like this is figuring out how uh you know how they work even if you're even if you're a really good and professional and experienced computer programmer or electrical engineer or both um you know, these games are not completely realistic. They have their own sort of rules and systems that they've designed. And so a lot of playing these games is just figuring out the, you know, the, the system that goes into the game. So that's, you know, that's, that's that. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, so that was why I can't, couldn't read from the output. And uh, regarding solving this puzzle more efficiently, basically... <sighs> In, in real life, so basically what we have here is we just need to invert something. I think that probably the, the hardest thing or the most sort of convoluted part of this is just creating the inversion because it goes up and then it goes down, goes up and then it goes down, which, you know, is not that difficult. I mean, this code does it. And you could do it in, I mean, you could do this in a few less lines of code. I mean, I think you could probably do this in like, I don't know, eight or nine lines of code or maybe even less. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think I didn't botch it that badly. I probably just, I'm a little bit less efficient than you, you could be, but um, how would you do it in real life? In real life, if you wanted to invert something, how would you do it? Well, the usual way to do it in assembly language would be to XOR something with a one. So XOR, I mean, I'm not gonna explain how the different logic gates work, but basically if you XOR anything, like let's say, let's say, in real life, you'd say something like XOR AL, with ff because ff is um hexadecimal for one 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 so all ones and when you xor a bit with one you invert that bit so in real life if you had a, a one uh, and you XOR'd XOR it with one, it would turn into zero. And if you had a zero and XOR'd it with one, it would turn into a one. So in real life, if you have any kind of signal that you want to invert uh, digitally or, or logically, you can just XOR it with one. That's that's how you do it. Um, but this game does not have an XOR command. Um, in fact, I don't know if it has... I don't think the game even has or, like if you say or, does it, I think it, it comes back and says unrecognized instruction. Yeah, invalid instruction. So what this game has, um, these chips, these new chips that we got down here, uh, oh, you don't see them on this puzzle. Uh, okay, we'll see them on the next puzzle, I guess. But basically, um, well, that's weird. The code, when I drag this slider on the right, the code highlights with it, see how that, See how that happens? Oh, that's weird. I never noticed that it does that before. Maybe, okay, maybe it doesn't always do it. But anyway, uh, oh, sorry. No, actually, no, we, we do have, these are the chips. These are the chips that I was talking about. So these four chips here, the LC70G040832 and 86, these actually perform logic functions. This is, this is just a regular inverter or what some people call a not gate. It just, you know, if, if you feed a one into it, you get a zero out and vice versa. 
So you could do something like an inversion with a, a separate chip like this. And it even has an XOR chip. This is an XOR chip. So you get, you get you know, XOR input here, and then this is XOR and not XOR here. Uh, and then similarly, this is a, um, an OR gate, and this is an AND gate. So it has those functions as separate hardware chips, but not as instructions which you can put here in um, or opcodes that you can put into the program which is not the case in real life and in, in real life most processors have uh, you know inverter or not and or and 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 XOR is less common but it's it's not rare like e even the 6502 which is one of the you know oldest known CPUs like one of the oldest popular CPUs even the 6502 um, has an XOR command, although it the 6502 calls it EOR for exclusive, I mean, it's exclusive OR. So most people call it XOR, the 6502 calls it EOR, but it's the same thing. It does exactly the same thing. So, like I said, this game does not have an XOR code. Um, in the absence of a real XOR command, in real life, what you'd have to do is pr pretty much essentially what I did here. Check, you know, just do if zero, then one, uh, else make it zero. So like basically if it is zero then turn it into a one, if it is a one turn it into a zero. So you just like a couple of if then statements or the assembler equivalent of if then statements. Um, but what this game does have is this game does have a command called not. But the not command works a little differently from um, what it does, it inverts the accumulator. If the accumulator is zero, not turns it into 100, and if it's 100, it turns it into a zero. So this command is obviously, uh, it's clearly meant for this puzzle. It's, it's clearly made for situations like, uh, they probably made this puzzle just so you could discover the not command, but I foolishly did not, haha. <laughs> I, I did not discover the knot, I just, you know, did this whole thing, which works, but in terms of lines of code is a little bit uh, less efficient. So what I'm actually going to do, I know I should leave this puzzle behind and go on to the next one, but I'm going to I'm going to try redoing this puzzle with the MC4000 real quick because uh, once you know about the knot command, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, can I, I just want to put this somewhere where I, where I don't lose it. I mean, I don't think I need it, but it would be nice to not lose it unnecessarily. Okay, so what are we doing here? So basically what we need to do is okay, we can we can start off the same as we did but we as we did before. We can say is P0 100. Check if P0 is 100. If it is, then say not. Invert the accumulator. And otherwise just uh, move uh, zero to the accumulator and then uh, move the accumulator to P1. Is that, uh, is that gonna work? Let's see, I don't wanna, I don't wanna delete this, hold on, can I, can I run this or, no, it won't let me run this if this is not connected. It won't, I can't just have this pin, hold on, you know what I can do probably? Can I copy and paste all of this? Looks like I can. Oh great! I think it, I think it's too much code. It's it's so much code that it won't let me copy and paste the whole thing. Can I copy and paste a lesser amount? No, apparently not. Um, how many lines is this? And how many lines is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine lines here in this note, so I don't see why I can't copy and paste nine lines from here. It should be possible. Control C, Control V. There we go. Now it worked. I don't know why it didn't work before. Don't ask me. Okay, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and toss that away. These notes are free. They're just floating notes that you can have sitting around just so you can make notes as you go. So wait, what does this do? Um, oh, I need to sleep. I need to put a sleep one at the end. All right, let's try this now. Hey, look at that. It works perfectly. So <laughs> the solution to this puzzle was actually that simple. If you know the not command then it really is that simple. It's just, again, I, I wasn't aware that this command existed. In real life, there's no such command. So, um, but yeah, easy. And look at that, my production cost is low because I used the cheapy chip. Uh, lines of code was only five. You might even be able to get it down to less than that, who knows. 
power usage is still uh, apparently I could get less power usage. I don't know how, but okay. Anyway, there we go. Okay, I think we've taken. I think we've spent enough time on that. Let's go ahead and come back to this uh, thing that I, where I left off last time. Let's check the time. How are we doing on time here? Ten minutes only. Okay, I'll go. We still have. Uh, I'm not going to make it. I, I stopped making 10 minute videos a while ago. I used to make just 10 minute videos, but for stuff like this, I think I think I can be excused for going on a little longer. So you remember this, right? Uh, this is. Um, um, yeah, just for just to remind you, it's this. So, yeah. So last time I did this click thing, which makes the woman's finger click every uh, every time unit so her finger just goes up and down like that but what we need to do is activate these uh, neon signs here these sort of neon outlines of the woman I think last time I said that there are three women depicted here that might have been a bit misleading it's one woman but it's three uh, neon outlines of her there's a, there's only one woman depicted here but there are three you can see there are three sort of outlines of her and that's how she she gets animated so because I tend to not be very efficient with my code, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, that's right. Uh, we have three outputs here, and this chip only has two simple uh, GPIO pins, which means I'll probably need a, a second processor just to handle the third output. So, okay, hold on. Let's see here. Um, I think the... Um, pattern here seems pretty regular. I mean, it's up for six cycles here, down for four, up for six, down for four. So really, hold on. Maybe I can do it with just a, maybe I can do it with one of these. Maybe I can save a little money and just use one of these. Let's give it a try. This will probably fail horribly and then I'll feel ashamed for even bothering to try, but let's see what happens. Let's see what happened. Okay, so, um... Yeah, so P0 is this thing that's up for six. So basically, um, move P1, or sorry, P0, 100. Or no, it's the inverse. Yeah, this uses... Um, it's, a, it's a classical sort of problem because in... Um, in most people's minds, it makes sense to say move source destination. You're moving something from here to here. But generally speaking, in most assembly, uh, in, in most CPUs, the, the assembly language is inverted. It's written so that you, you write move destination and then source. And that sometimes mixes me up in this game because, you know, real life assembly language is inverted. But anyway. Uh, okay, so move 100, P0, and then we sleep for six time units. You move 0 to P0, sleep for 4 time units, and then we do, we do it all over again. That's that's the cycle. Is it really that simple? It really is that simple. It's working. Wow. Okay. Well, I think the trick here then is... Right, okay, to synchronize everything so that it's all... Well, okay, hold on. That's, it shouldn't be that difficult. Because I'm just wondering... I could I could use three chips for the three outputs here and really cheese it, but maybe I can be at least a little bit more efficient than that and say... Yeah, I mean, this, this should be doable. So after it goes low, we sleep for just one cycle. Then we move 100 to P1. Sleep for two cycles. Wait, no. Wait, what am I doing? Uh, duh, no. No. Here we move 100 to P1. Then we sleep for one cycle. Then we move 0 to P1. Like that. There we go. Then we sleep for two cycles. Then we move 100 to P1 again. I'm gonna run out of space, aren't I? Because yeah. Okay. I could probably think about how to do this more efficiently, but I really don't want to waste you folks' time with 
me floundering around like this. So let's just grab everything from here, copy and paste it to here, get that out of here, and let's put this chip on the board. Uh, hold on, let's clean up here for a second. So, same pin assignments, everything is the same here, just, uh, just a larger chip with more room to do stuff. Okay, so what are we doing here? So, right, so P0 goes to zero, and we do that, sleep for one cycle, move zero to P1, sleep for two, 100 to P1, sleep for one cycle. And then, um, what I can probably do then is, let's say up here, move 0 to P0, uh, to P1, so it resets when it goes back to the top. Alright, does that work? That works. Yep. Okay. Pretty easy. I think that's nothing too complicated in my opinion. Look at me sounding all confident and tough, like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, and then the last one here, um, so it's low for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Move zero to P0, sleep for seven cycles, and then it's move 100 to P0 and sleep for two cycles. And that's really it. Is that the whole thing? So watch how she animates. See how she, oh, okay. Well, it's slightly wrong. Hold on, what's, what's wrong with my timing here? Uh, what did I do wrong? I, uh, why does it? Oh, that's interesting. The very first time, it's low for seven cycles. But after that, it's low for eight cycles. So each time it gets offset by one. And that is an off by one error that keeps, that's additive. So, okay, so then what I'll probably need to do is say here, jump to loop. And then at the very beginning, right, okay, so I'll need to, okay, so actually this will need to be a sleep eight. Okay, let's, in, let's invert this then. So at the beginning we say sleep seven, and then we do a, we, uh, make it go high for two cycles, and then make it go low for eight cycles, and then we do it all over again. Okay, is that going to work? That's, wait, what is, what is wrong here? Why is it not working now? What is wrong here? Oh. <laughs> I mistakenly wrote not, uh, not move zero to P0, but move 10 to P0. That's why. Okay. There we go. Now it's working. See how she animates? That's how she's supposed to animate. So she's she's a compulsive drinker and she just keeps taking sips of her drink while she is clicking the mouse frantically. And that's how it's supposed to animate. That's the... That is the puzzle. Alright. So... A uh, little more expensive than ideal, probably. There was probably a better way to do that, but I mean, pretty straightforward. I mean, that's that's easy stuff. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Okay. And Joe gets excited and says, ha the end result looks great. I love the way it looks like this. Solid Steel Gamer is really clicking the mouse button and drinking your soda. This is going to be huge. All right. It's huge in Japan or Shenzhen or whatever. Okay. Drinking game scorekeeper. Speaking of drinking, creating, create working design for to view histograms and leader. Oh, that's what it always says. Okay. Joe says, the Baron von Schnapps is in the house, y'all. I was out drinking last night and met someone from the company that owns this brand. They're drinking and they're promoting the telephone. It's off the rails. I made a deal supply with the personal scorekeepers and give away at their events. Wait, what's the game? What counts as a point? What would be a foul? Surely not individual drinks. I don't remember the actual rules. Lol. Okay. That's fine. Let's go ahead and... Oh, this one's a little, a little bit bigger now. Um... Okay, so we've got a uh, seven-segment display here, and two uh, two external connections. All right, let's see, how does it look? So, point and foul are inputs. Okay, so both of these are inputs. 
display is oh this here we, now we see the beginning of X bus. Remember I told you about X bus before. Now we see yeah that little yellow marking on the pin there shows that that is an X bus pin. Okay, so counter your account starting at zero ensure the display is always showing the current value when point is okay. So when point is pushed, the count should be incremented by one. When foul is pushed, the, the point should be, the count should be decremented by two, but not below zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this and. It kind of annoys me the way these simple inputs are on opposite sides like that. I think that's one of those, I think that's part of the challenge. You're supposed to figure out how to route things efficiently. Uh, in this case, it's not too bad. We still have plenty of room. I think later designs will be more difficult. I mean, here we have plenty of room. So it's just annoying that the pins, uh, we're not gonna use, you know, like pins x0, x1, we use pin x3. We're gonna use x2, I'm gonna use either of these, doesn't really matter. But uh, there we go, that was the wiring, once again. But the wiring is is really like child's play and now it's just, um, just writing the code. Okay, so let's see now. Um, uh, so the count should not go below zero. How does this game handle negative numbers? If I say subtract one, and try that now. It actually, okay, it actually does negative numbers. Okay, so I can just say then, um, okay, that's fine. I'll just say, let's have a, a, um, I'll just say sub two, and then I'll say test if the accumulator is less than zero, and if so, if yes, then move zero into the accumulator. So TLT is for test if less than, test if the accumulator is less than zero, plus sign means if yes, then move zero into the accumulator so it doesn't go negative. Okay, that's, I wrote the last part, for, part first, that's actually the last part. Uh, so let's see. Um, I guess I should, okay, where do we start? When point is put, okay, so test if P1 is 100, because when P1 goes high, that means we add one. Test if P1 is 100, and if so, then add one. And then I guess we need to say test if P0 is 100, and if so, then that's where the sub two comes in. And test if QMX less than zero, move. Okay, cool. Um, I feel like I might have oversimplified that. I feel like I might, might be missing something, but I can't really imagine what it might be. So I'll just leave that as it is for now. Actually, hold on. Let's let's see. How does this? How does it look? Does it actually? Oh, I forgot to sleep. I forgot to sleep. Sleep one. Okay, let's try that. So I can't really. Eh. Because the seven segment display is not working yet, I can't, well, I guess I can, okay, let me let me just do a step and just make sure that, well, let me just do an advance and make sure that it's actually, okay. So it should be one, accumulator is one, that's good. Should be zero, accumulator is zero, that's good. I'm just basically matching the accumulator with this down here. So it's one, that's good, two, that's good, three, good, four, good, five, six, seven, five, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 11, 12. Okay. 12. 12. Okay, uh, so that works fine. So really all we have to do is just say move accumulator to X3. And that's it. Oh, and then uh, here's where we sleep and not here. Is that it? Is, is it really that simple? Hey, it looks like it. All right. All right, not too bad. I find this acceptable. Hey, okay. I think my solution is pretty similar to what most people did. Oh, my production cost, hold on, how many lines is that? Oh, eight lines. So let's save some money. Let us pull this out here. Dump the code in here. And now, We've got, uh, yeah, we just, instead of, um, instead of X3, now it's, the pin is X1. All right, let's test it again. Should be, it's the same code. I mean, it should do the same thing. 
just need to needed to renumber the pin since the physical location of the pin was uh, was different. Well, this chip doesn't have an X3 because it only has two X bus pins. There you go. Okay, that's I think I think that's pretty much the solution that most people did because it seems like my line is right on the bar. So I'm basically just a basic uh, basic dude, just just doing the same solutions as everyone. But that's okay. I'm not too bothered by that. Okay. Ooh, Woo Lily sends an email and says, "If you can't remember the rules of the game you were playing, how are you sure that you actually made the deal?" Because they sent us a case with a variety of flavors. It's very tasty stuff. Come try some. It's already too late for me, but you can still save yourselves. Heed my warning. Do not drink off the Baron von Schnapps. Bye then. See you in the next life. All right, Carl's a bit of a drama queen. Hey, Shenzhen days. Saying stuff better. Hey, y'all. Y'all. You all. Y'all. Sometimes it's tough to represent how word really sounds in text, huh? Take for a totally random example, Shenzhen. How do you say it? What's that ZH or ZH doing in there? Can you just ignore the H? Spoiler warning, you can't. ZH is its own sound in Chinese. We don't have time to go into all the little fun foibles of Pinyin, the, the official romanization system for Mandarin Chinese. So let me just give you a little shortcut. Say Shen Zhen. You know, like you're talking to your best friend. Zhen. And, well, then you're probably closer than you were before. How's that for confidence? So I've been saying Shen Zhen, but apparently it's Shen Zhen? Well, that doesn't sound qu quite right to me, but okay. I'll do one more. The Chinese Yuan is the currency here. That word is one syllable. I hear people go Yuan or Yuan, and wow, that's kind of painful. Okay, so it's not Yuan, it's Yuan. 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 Like like the name Juan. You don't say Huan, you say Juan. So it's Yuan. Okay. I'm not sure to fix this quickly. How about trying to say Yuan really, really fast? Or just make two sounds instead of one. Maybe it's closer. Maybe. This is actually an interesting point, which I've been thinking about uh, not too long ago. I don't want to get an, off on a big tangent here, but you know how most English vowels, or the names of most English vowels, are actually diphthongs? Like the letter A. Most native English speakers think of the letter A as one sound, but it's really not. It's it's two sounds. It's A. Hear how it transitions? It starts off with A, and then it goes to E. A. Um, e is just one sound. Um, I is not. It starts off ah, and then it goes to e, so it's I. So a lot of a lot of things like that, you know, actually contain multiple sort of phonic sounds, and we don't think about them because we're so used to those individual sounds that we think of them as one sound, even though they're actually multiple sounds jammed together. I started thinking about that because it's, I think it's the same with the Russian letter Uli, which is that notorious Russian letter that no one can pronounce. I'm going off on a tangent here. Sorry, I'll stop now. By the way, we use that thing as a currency symbol, which you might have associated with JPY, the Japanese yen. And it is. It's also CNY, Chinese yuan. Don't you dare give me side eye if you come from a place that uses the dollar sign, because do you mean that Hong Kong dollars, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars? Yeah, at least we'd probably agree that dollar, 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 yen, yen, yen means hella cash. Anyway, now you're wandering around Shenzhen, buying things in Chinese yuan like the super pro that you are. Pronunciation can be tough, but it's worth putting there for, ain't it, y'all? Yours, Tilly. All right. Tilly is, uh, she's, she makes a, she makes a nice, uh, newsletter. It's kind of a nice little ambient thing. I think, uh, there's a nice talk that, um, the eponymous Zach from Zachtronics gave at Google. You can find the, uh, the, the video of it on YouTube. Um, apparently, he mentions in the video, they actually consulted uh, Andrew Bunny Huang. So Bunny Huang is, um, he's a, I think he's a guy of Chinese descent, but he's Chinese American, so he doesn't really speak fluent Chinese and didn't grow up in China. But um, he's sort of the, the go-to guy for how things work in Shenzhen. And apparently they actually consulted him for sort of cultural input on tweaking the the feel of local culture in Shenzhen and that that part of that input went into this game so interesting little uh, little tidbit okay ooh the product is harmonic maximization engine but Carl describes it as a rubbish audio thing so contract <laughs> comes in to build a piece of audio kit Okay, so this is the first of several uh, puzzles where you need to look in the included manual with the game to get a sort of an algorithm out of it. So, um, yeah, we have to help a dodgy American company market rubbish like this as premium kit for audiophiles. I don't think audiophiles are that easily fooled, or maybe they are, who knows. So I'm not going to solve this puzzle now because I am at, I'm just coming up on half an hour, so I'll go ahead and stop here, but let's just quickly take a look at what the board looks like. So the board looks like... 
this. Okay. So we have audio in, which is an input, obviously. We have audio out, which is an output. And we have maximize, which is an input connected to a switch. So basically, yeah. So in the manual, uh, there is an uh, an ad. There is an advertisement featuring the, the harmonic maximization algorithm, uh, which, as Carl says, is quite rubbish. Um, but um, yeah, we can... We will implement that next time. Let's go ahead and do that in the next video. It's one of the annoying things. I, I wanted to say um, about that not instruction as well. See, the thing is, uh, it's one of the annoying things about being a software programmer. You might get a good idea for some program function and say, hey, you know, I want to program that. And then you sit down and, you know, write it. Maybe it takes you not much time or maybe it takes you a lot of time but you, you go to the trouble of making something and then when you're done you find out oh there is already a built-in function that does that the thing is computer programming is not a new field it's been around for some decades now and most of the ideas you know there, there are millions of programmers around the world and most of the ideas for useful programming functions have been thought of by now so if you have an idea for for some programming function you say hey it, it would be useful if we had a piece of code that does this. Chances are good that somebody has beaten you to the punch and already written an open source, uh, you know, public domain function that does exactly that. So it's it's a little bit difficult to be original when you're a programmer. It's hard to think of new ideas because, you know, it's there. Are, you know, you can be creative. There are a lot of ideas that you can have, but there are also lots and lots of ideas in the world on the internet. And so the chances are that you will come up with an original idea which no one else has thought of before is kind of low. It's kind of like in that, uh, there's an XKCD strip about, uh, about real programmers and some guy makes a story about the butterfly effect and then at the end somebody says, oh, there's already a function for that built into Emacs. Yeah, that, that butterfly thing in Emacs, which I think is fictional, but uh, it made it for a funny story, sort of, kind of, anyway. Anyway. This has been me talking way too much as usual and solving a couple of puzzles, uh, which were fairly easy, but, uh, you know, fun to do. All right, uh, well, that's, uh, that's it for this video. I don't know how much longer I'll be doing these videos because I noticed they're not very popular. The last video didn't get a lot of views. I don't expect this one to get many views either. People here tend to vote with their with their views. Like people don't say, I don't like this, this isn't interesting to me. They just don't watch it. And I noticed that in the views. So, uh, you know, if, if nobody's watching it, it's like, I mean, I don't make these videos to get millions and millions of views, but if nobody's watching it, then what's the point? Then I might as well just play this game by myself. So um, so we'll see how much longer we'll be doing this, but I might, I, I probably won't play this game all the way to the end, but uh, I hope that this was entertaining for those of you who did watch it, and I hope that I'll see you next time for more of Shenzhen.io. Thanks for watching, everyone. Ta-ta for now.